Christina, I know I've seen her before. I just can't place where. That's it. <laughs> Steve, she's a playmate from Playboy magazine, Miss October 1987. Let's rock. Thanks, Dad. Can I get a open? Whoa! No Man Presents, live from the nudie bar, the Married with Children podcast. And here are your hosts, Dan, Jamie, and Al. All right, guys, get up, get out, and listen to the Married with Children podcast. My name is Al, and I'm just wondering if Marilyn Monroe is laughing at me. She doesn't even know you're alive. I am Jamie. I'm just stretching before I ovulate. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, did a thumb tag just bounce off your head? Anyways, <laughs> hot off a of bum's face, I'm Dan Chase. <laughs> hot <laughs> off a of bum's face. It rhymed and everything. Wow. <laughs> it was meant to be. This, <laughs> this is my calling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, we are desperately seeking Miss October tonight. It is season four, episode seven. Original air date November fifth, nineteen eighty nine. Which once again makes no sense because <laughs> a couple episodes ago we did fair exchange and they were having Thanksgiving dinner. So, how, how many Halloween episodes did, does the show have, Alex? Uh, I pull no, I pulled all the Christmas episodes one time. I never pulled all the Halloween ones, so. I don't know that. I'm, I'm guessing like four. Gotcha. They got a little looser as the seasons went on. Like Alan Griff had like an all night uh, werewolf madness shoe sale or something. Like I always, I always wondered if the Treehouse of Horror, with both shows being on Fox, had an influence on them doing Halloween shows later on. Oh wow, that would have been cool. No, I wish they had a Treehouse of Horror kind of thing with this. Yeah, that would have been nice. No, but do you know what I mean, though? Do you think it influenced their decision to make Halloween episodes because of the popularity of that? Well, The Simpsons definitely influenced Married with Children after a while. That's what I mean, yeah. I don't know if it would be that specific to Treehouse. Mm, okay. I don't recall any show back then really getting into Halloween until Roseanne. Yep. Roseanne, yes. I mean, like, Roseanne kind of, I mean, they would mention it or whatever, and shows would have the occasional Halloween episode, but Roseanne kind of kicked down the door mm-hmm. as far as going all out. Well, for real live TV, right. But I think The Simpsons definitely did it for TV in general. Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm, right. So uh, the writers of this episode, Arthur Silver, Steve Bing, this is desperately seeking Miss October. When a sexy centerfold visits Al's shoe store, Al tries to retrieve his Playboy collection, and I will not say the rest. Wake up! Honey! Honey, it's time to go to school! Kelly Bundy! I wasn't copying off his paper, I swear! <laughs> oh, hi, Mom. It's time for school. Oh, well, I can't go to school yet. I've got this current events report due today, and I'm waiting for Bud to bring me a newspaper. Here it is, Kel. Hot off a bum's face. (laughs) And that always stuck out to me as amazing, that line. I think I've used that in my personal life, too. Like, I've acted like I, when I walked (laughs) into a room with a newspaper, I would say that. (laughs) And people don't know what to make of it when you do that out of context, you know? I love some good old random Alex comedy. (laughs) <laughs> roll it up yeah uh so the newspaper is the national investigator and that is um like those tabloids and i remember and especially during this show like in the early 90s and stuff the greatest thing ever in my personal life was the weekly world news yes we had a subscription at my house yeah oh oh god Like, they would always, like, Photoshop everything, and back then it was, like, a big deal because, like, you couldn't believe, like, for this one, man hatches from egg, and it's, like, a human being coming out of a giant egg, and all the birds in the nest are staring at him, all bewildered. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, the famous one where the space alien uh, backs Clinton. (laughs) You got my steamy nights with Hillary and the UFO love nest. (laughs) 
Bigfoot shot by Mo- Montana police. <laughs> half man, half fish are washing up on the shores of Florida. And the greatest ever is the bat child found in cave. You guys know Bat Boy, right? Bat Boy, of yeah. Of course, right. He became the mascot for Weekly World News. Yep. You got a Bat Boy to, right? t-shirt if you got a subscription. I had one. Are you serious? You guys yeah, know man. all this? Yeah, man. I'm telling you, we used to buy the, okay, we used no, to buy listen. Weekly World News every I, single week at the grocery store. See. And finally, my dad got tired of buying it every week, so he bought a subscription. Wow. And we seriously had Weekly World News come to my house, and that was... <clears throat> That was awesome. I love those papers. And my grandmother had a subscription to National Enquirer, so we were covered on both ends. This this is big in my life right now. This is a monumental <laughs> situation. No, because my whole life I wondered who buys those things. We like, did. It's, it's us. It's you guys. <laughs> wow. Oh, you should see the, the one Satan skull found in New Mexico. It's a oh, skull no. with horns coming out of the head. And a werewolf battles cops in Alabama. <laughs> there was one that a um, couple years ago I picked one up and, well, I say couple. It was actually a long time ago. But uh, there were apparently zombies in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Georgia. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. And it, uh, just to end it off with a, a tie into Playboy magazine, obviously Marilyn Monroe was the first Playboy centerfold. So there's one here that says Marilyn was bitten by a vampire, then murdered by FBI to prevent her biting JFK. See that one, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> the national investigator. Yeah, well, everybody's going to be using actual newspapers. And I decided R. Kelly should go the tabloid route. <laughs> now, Kelly, which one of these interests you? Let's see, Psychic predicts that someone will watch Gary Shandling. (laughs) Gary Shandling takes another hit because... I noticed that. (laughs) I mean, wow. What was Gary Shandling doing at this time? Was it the Larry Sanders already? No, it was a It's Gary Shandling show. Oh, okay. Someone, a a psychic predicts someone will watch it. (laughs) Or Spuds McKenzie just says no to Justine Bateman. (laughs) <laughs> well, I'll take that one. At least someone's heard of Spuds McKenzie. Uh, family ties. Ah, okay. Jason Bateman's sister. Is it and, really? Yeah. That's a stretch. <clears throat> what? Why? <laughs> no, it's not. I wonder why Dan's so surprised. <laughs> I just did it. No, it's a small world. <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> Oh, and there is an arcade in Pulp Fiction. Shut up, Alex. Um, <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she's from Family Ties. That's what she's known for. Uh, no. She's also done some, like, Lifetime movies and stuff since then, and maybe some other stuff, but her main gig was Family Ties. She's done some Lifetime movies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know, not that anybody cares, but I did find this funny. I like to at least look something like anytime they reference anything. I just want to see if there's anything interesting about what they're talking about. So well, you looked up naked Miss October. Yeah, we get it. No, I looked up uh, Spuds McKenzie. Yeah, dude, I was going to ask you about this. OK, yeah, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Continue. So you do want to know a little bit about it. I okay. do. I do. Yes. Well, I I pulled what the only thing I found remotely interesting. So. It's a bull terrier dog, and it was obviously the, the, the dog for Budweiser. He was in all the commercials. Now, <clears throat> there was controversy about this dog. So shortly after his rise to fame, it was learned that the dog who portrayed Spuds McKenzie was actually female. Oh, wow. Okay. Soon after the ads were first aired in 1987, th- there was this whole movement. The senator was claiming that the beer maker was using spuds to appeal to children for the purpose of getting them interested in their product at an early age. Right. <laughs> kind of like it was kind of like Joe Camel the controversy. Right. Yeah. I used to love Spuds McKenzie. I what? I had do you remember did you ever go to the carnival yes. and like you'd win something and then yes. you'd get those like square mirrors with the pictures on them? Yep. That I didn't realize it was apparently a Coke mirror. But <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> but then they also, you could also win the feathers with the, the that are actually roach clips. But when you're a kid, you don't 
Wow, look at think Jamie. About, you, can, you don't think about that stuff? Like, I just walk around with those feathers and the clips in my hair, but <laughs> it is a roach clip, but whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, but I had one of those mirrors hanging on my bedroom wall for the longest time because I wanted in a carnival. Because you, loved cause you love cocaine? <laughs> no, because I loved Spuds McKenzie. Wow. So did I. I love beer. <laughs> So, Desperately Seeking Miss October, uh, the meaning of that title is it's from the movie Desperately Seeking Susan with Madonna. God. Yeah, I don't really want to get into that, if you guys don't mind. <laughs> I, I would love <laughs> nothing more if we just skipped that totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some things worth mentioning, some things aren't. Jamie, do you have anything to say about that movie? Uh, no. All right. <laughs> That's why I love you, Jamie. <laughs> Hey, look at this. New Jersey housewife wins $8.7 million lottery. Huh. And she won it after rubbing the belly of her good luck charm, Tubro, the fat Panamanian god of money. <laughs> I need something lucky to rub. How about Kelly? Every guy that rubs her gets lucky. <laughs> So that's cool that they gave a shout out to my filth pile. <laughs> um, <laughs> At least you admit it, though. That's cool. The fat Panamanian god of money. Now, I looked up as much as I could. That doesn't really exist <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. It's sort of just for this episode. So we all cannot get our own two bros, guys, if uh, you're that into this episode. Well, it's like a it's like a Buddha, right? Like a little Buddha belly type of thing. That's why you rub it. Pretty much, yeah. Uh. So you can get variations of it. Uh. What's really interesting is that every guy who rubs Kelly gets lucky. <laughs> yes, they do. I'd be lucky just a rubber, <laughs> but I guess there's more to come after that. You probably need a rubber. <laughs> yeah, from what I've heard, I would. Uh... Al, honey, I want to win the lottery. So could I have $195 so I can buy two bro, the fat Panamanian god of money? Peg, you know what $195 can mean to this family? It means food, it means shelter. It means college for the children. <laughs> What's this word? A. <laughs> oh, just like the letter. <laughs> So Peg needs $195 to buy two, bro, which in today's money is $390. So she's willing to spend 400 bucks. Wow. Hey, Al. I got off work a little early today. What you doing? Uh, just trying to kill another 60 years so Willard Scott can say hi to me on TV. <laughs> Every morning on the Today Show, Willard Scott would wish happy birthday to... Hundred people who are hundred years old. Mm. Didn't Al Roker continue that after two? Don't they still do it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, Al, your problem is you don't take time to appreciate the finer things in life. Come with me to a museum, a symphony, an opera. You are never too old to experience Hooter Alert. <laughs> so, this stunningly hot chick. Walks into the shoe store. Al has... When Steve yells Hooter Alert, I don't think you'll ever see Al move faster again. <laughs> <laughs> so this girl, her name is Brandy Brandt. Between 1989 and 1996, Brandt was married to Motley Crue bassist Nikki Six. Oh, really? With whom she has three children. Oh, wow. So Brandy Brandt was... Um, a playboy playmate at 18 years old and she she was in the October 1987 issue I have that issue and it's in a frame above the bar in my man cave mm. and it's been there as soon as I moved into this house like for some reason that was something I had to have <laughs> <laughs> nice because at the end of the episode Al holds that issue up and I was like I gotta find this I remember you. I remember when you got that, or when you told me about that. You told me about this years ago. Oh yeah, yeah, about two wow. years ago. 
That's yep. awesome. So this is this is the infamous uh, issue. Okay. Yep. Wait, where did you get that? Do they still have them? Oh yeah, it's on eBay. So there you go. Perfect. Every like hardcore way into way too into married with children guy should definitely go on eBay and pick <laughs> up this issue. Now, what do you think of this girl's looks? Stunning. Yes, Absolutely hot. stunning. Like ridiculously yeah, that, hot. That's pretty much a nine point five ten for me. It's a ten for me. Without a doubt. Yeah. I, and I don't I don't get caught up on the whether oh I like blondes or brunettes or whatever. Like to me, hot is hot. Mm-hmm. But he likes him breathing. I like him breathing. well sometimes. If he wants a fussy night. <laughs> Depends on how much uh, crap I want to put up with. But uh, yeah, no, she's a, she she's a, she's a ten for sure. Yeah, I can't argue that. I mean, she's hot. Yeah. I just sent you a picture. Oh, you did. Oh, wait, I gotta hold on, guys. We have to take a little break. <laughs> oh God, I dropped my phone. I got so excited, I dropped my phone. Jamie sent a photo. Let's see. Oh my God. I can't find it. I'm freaking out. Hold on. Yeah, I found it. <laughs> I know we're sitting right next to each other. I should just show it to you, but you just get your own phone. <laughs> this is this is gonna this is gonna need some privacy, Alex. Oh my God, that's her. Yes, Maui, Wowie. Yeah. Here, let me help you. Come over here and sit down. I'll get you some. Uh... What do I sell here? <laughs> shoes. Yeah, shoes. Would you like one? Uh, let me handle this, Al. How about something in a man who will give you everything he owns? Well, I already have a pair of those. What I need right now is a pair of stiletto heels, black, size six. Al um, and Steve run to go get the shoe. Al trips Steve as they're walking <laughs> back in. And then I love he goes he goes to help him up, and he, he reaches down, he only pulls the shoe back yeah, up. Yeah, he can catch the shoe <laughs> That was great. Dude, can I just say how cute that is that they that Steve knows it 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 gives you the impression that they've actually done this before that right. that Steve has come in and hung out with him in the shoe store right. that they've he's helped him out or whatever because they both know where everything is. Yeah. They and Steve yep. has really no business knowing this stuff but he's and and it's funny the assumption that's made when she says what she needs and and they basically are they're like, N- neither one of us is moving. Like Steve's like, I am not, right. I am not leaving. And I'm thinking, why would Al assume that Steve would go? You know, it's <laughs> not, you know, that's not his job. But there is this sort of general assumption between the two. I think that's cute. Right. That's yeah, weird. I never thought about that. The look that they give each other. It's I'm just not so funny. Either. Yeah, right. But uh, I, I always pictured Al and Steve like trying to avoid their wives and probably hanging out in the store, maybe like drinking beers in the back, like late night. You could totally see him hanging out there for sure. Well, this was always what was cool about Steve. Like, although much like Marcy, he tries to come off all prim and proper. Like, he never shied away from, you know, the girl thing. Like when they were watching the girl fix the refrigerator, when um, Tiffany was over the house and Steve would call the the <laughs> Bundy's house to speak to Tiffany and Marcy picked up. And now with this and stuff like and, and even when they were in the the uh, lingerie shop in the infamous episode. Um, <laughs> oh, her cups runneth over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. So that stuff like that. Steve never shied away from the chick thing, which is always cool. Uh, even from the first episode when you wonder what channel PBS is on for smut. So that's always cool <laughs> that he has that side to him, even though he tries to come off like something else. There you are. Do you mind if I walk in them? Well, I prefer you dance in them, but it's not mandatory. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> Steve, I know. I've seen her before. I just can't place where. They don't really know anything about her except that she's a hot chick until she bends over (laughs) and then Al recognizes her. That's it! (laughs) Steve, she's a playmate from Playboy magazine, Miss October 1987. Can't be. Steve, I may not know the color of my wife's eyes. I don't know my children's birthday. (laughs) But I know... I know that's Brandy Brandt, born 1968, teeny, teeny birthmark, round bend of left knee. Favorite movie, The Big Bus. 
and he's like drooling when he's describing all her favorites, her likes and dislikes. Yep. <laughs> my sister, I'll prove it to you. Uh, miss, excuse me, aren't you Brandy Brandt, Miss October 1987? Why, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've always admired your work. <laughs> yeah, so, Brandy Brandt, um, in this episode, she was 20 years old, and she's 49 years old today. She does not look like that anymore. Because of the whole Nikki Six thing? Is that her claim to fame, kind of? That's how I know who she is. Being, being a trophy wife. <laughs> Mostly was a Playboy chick. It's all she really ever did, but she was in a couple things. She was in Aerosmith's Love in an Elevator. Love in an Elevator. Yep. <laughs> she was in Citizen Toxie, The Toxic Avenger Part 4. Hey, so is Eli Roth. Yeah, that is one of the worst movies ever made. Agreed. So she was in this movie Ticker from 2001, starring Tom Sizemore, Dennis Hopper, and Steven Seagal. Jamie Presley's in it, Nas, Peter Green, <clears throat> A lot of famous actors in a weird way. Uh, so she was in that. She was like a uh, she was like a waitress in some sleazy club bar kind of thing, and a guy like grabbed her to use her as a hostage. Definitely, it's a, it's an okay movie. I wouldn't buy it if you're just wanting to get something with her in it. She's not even in it for more than like twenty seconds. So, but it was okay. So when. Al asked her, aren't you Brandy Brant, Miss October 1987? Can that ever come off as nothing but creepy? I wouldn't think it was creepy. I would think, uh, except that what year is this? It, well, it, two years ago. Two, okay. Nah. That's not bad, right? Or is it? I mean, maybe if it just happened this month, you should know, right? Well, but... right. Like, if it was current, then it wouldn't be, a, you know, it'd be nothing. But I don't know if I would expect someone to remember it from two years ago. But <laughs> if they did... Honestly, I'd probably be flattered. Right. I love the shoes. How much? Oh, well, they're on the house. After all, you made it possible for Steve and I to have sex with our wives. <laughs> Which is great. Yeah. You really have Brandy's issue of Playboy? <laughs> I've got them all, Steve. <laughs> I've been collecting Playboys my whole life. My dad got me started on the hobby. It was my 12th birthday. <laughs> We watch mom Singapore sling herself into oblivion. Singapore sling is a drink, a cocktail. Oh. So she Singapore slinged herself into oblivion. She was she was drunk. Oh. How how horrible would this show be without Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> Singapore sling was what my mom used to drink. So that's <laughs> Oh, wow. No, I know. Do they still make that? It it is considered dated. And as in it's not because drinks kind of go through just like food, just like clothes goes through go through fashion periods, you know, things that are popular and then not. And then if you order something, then it can seem a little out of style. A lot right. of newer bartenders may not even know how to make it. Then we went down in the basement and there behind the toolbox was dad's stash. Oh, the breasts we saw that night. <laughs> And when dad died, he gave them all to me. Well, whenever I watched this episode with my dad, I always thought that when he heard Al telling the story about how when he was 12, his dad brought him downstairs or whatever to their stash of Playboys, I always thought my dad would go, you know what? I'm going to do that with you, Alex. But no, never did that. Aww. <laughs> when I was 12, I would always glance over like, well, I'm 12 now. You have Playboys? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he didn't. But uh, I eventually found them anyway, around that age anyway. They were under his bed. Typical. Yeah. So I somehow stumbled upon those. So I was good. And I remember the girl I was obsessed with back then, the Brandy Brand of, for, for me, was this girl Lisa Matthews. I have no idea what edition or what year. It was probably at 92 or something. <laughs> we're going to see Brandy. We're going to see Brandy. <laughs> They're gone, Steve. My Playboys. My stable. My women. My life. What could have happened to them? Oh, hi, Al. 
Look, honey, I got a tube row of my very own. Oh, happy day. <laughs> uh, Peg, you mind if I cut in for a second? Peg, where did you get the money to buy old tube row? I sold your Playboys. <laughs> Did you want them? <laughs> like, what timing? <laughs> right. It's sitcom timing. Right. Like, what was the other one that we talked about? The uh, the tooth stuff, right? Like, right. the kids need a tooth exam. Marcy happens to see it, knows it is. Suddenly, Al's teeth hurt. This one is a little smoother than that. Do you think? Like, I don't think, I don't, I don't care. I have no problem with it. But how do you figure that, though? It just seems more. Like... <laughs> it just, it just. I, I'm more accepting of this one. Okay. It's also though really convenient <laughs> that uh, it's the same price because it wasn't implied that Peg had any money left over. You know, like she, like she didn't come in eating a burger this time with it. You know, so that would imply that she sold all those Playboys for that exact amount of money that she needed for two bro. Well, I got to say, um, I believe I, – I don't know how many Playboys out. I guess whatever she brought back. And if he was collecting them his whole life, he'd have a lot more than than what was in the wheelbarrow. But Right. Yeah, but either way, like, um, they are still cheap. Like, when I went to get the Brandy Brandt one, it was only like 6 or $7. Okay. So I thought it would be like 30 by now or something like weird. I thought, you know, guys who are into this probably, you know, like comic books, they try to do that. But no. They're not, they have no value. So you would have to sell a lot of them to get even the $400 today, you know? Right. Some yeah. of them have, have a little more value, I think. Like, I still have the, and I've never taken them out of plastic, the <laughs> a reprint of the Marilyn Monroe issue. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm not saying it's worth anything. I haven't looked because I've, I've never wanted to sell them, but I still have that one. And also the double issue that was Pamela Anderson on one cover and jenny mccarthy oh. on the other cover oh I have, yep. I have both of those issues what a combo well uh al doesn't handle the news well um and he tries to strangle to bro peg takes it back and bud goes down in the basement this time around and uh you know he's going down to get some whacking material and al says peg how could you sell the family playboys and she says that they meant nothing to anyone but you. And Bud proves that to be false because he comes up, staggers back up the stairs while holding his heart when he realizes the Playboys are not in the basement anymore. I think he was more devastated than Al was. Oh, he, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And it, it's weird when Peg says they didn't mean anything to anyone but you, as if that means nothing. Like, she was so concerned when she knocked over Al's ashes at the barbecue. Like, oh, my God, I did that to Daddy's thing. You know, when Al has a thing, you don't mess with it. You know, there's certain things that even if you don't respect Al, there's certain things, you don't, lines you don't cross. And you would think this would be one of them. Mm, right. But, yeah, no. Um, somehow it's not. Mm. Al Bundy, you, sir are maggot bits. <laughs> oh, if only a man could have two wives. <laughs> what did he do now? Well, Steve and I were having a wonderful intimate encounter. As usual, I was humming the Battle Hymn of the Republic. <laughs> we find out that Marcy hums the Battle Hymn of the Republic during sex. <laughs> Like, why would you go, can you imagine having sex with a girl and she's doing that? Yeah. I once sang the... Oh, God. Oh, God. I once sang the jingle to Stetson Cologne when I was with a guy. Do it. Do it now for us, Jamie. Yeah, we don't know what that is. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Easy for you. Easy for you. Stetson makes it easy for what? Okay, it was a joke because he was wearing Stetson cologne. <laughs> this is a long, this is a long time ago. So he was. So I asked him what he was wearing, and he said, "I'm wearing Stetson." So I started singing the jingle. The jingle. <laughs> and suddenly, a thumbtack bounced off my head. 
<laughs> I looked up and found Miss October hanging from the headboard of my marital bed. <laughs> So while they're having sex, Steve is looking at Brandy. That is, like, ruthless. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm a single guy, never been married. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. That would never fly. If I knew that something was going down that night, I, I might peek at a few videos and stuff and get my That's mind my all... Guess. Yeah, get my mind ready to live out these fantasies and... And all that, and then go upstairs, and that's—I think—that's about as far as you could push something like that to, to to actually be looking at it while you're with a chick is like, but but still, it's just crazy to think that, especially Steve doing that, and then thinking that he'd somehow get away unnoticed <laughs> right. is like she, amazing to me. She would be cool with that. Like, if the thumbtack never fell, Marcy never would have just looked in that three-foot vicinity. Now, Jamie, what would you do if, if a thumbtack bounced off of your head and you found out what the guy was doing? Oh, I would tell him we need to switch to tape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, this whole thing is – this just shows that their marriage is in crisis. Uh, as you guys know, it's pretty much winding down, and – the signs that their marriage is not a good one, you know, it comes up pretty often. Um, and this is one of the cases. Uh, like, they're just – he doesn't want to be with her anymore. <laughs> like, he's he's already off his mind is somewhere else now, and he's realizing that there is greener grass out there. He found the issue. <laughs> well, after – Questioning him. <laughs> a nauseous, teary Steve admitted that this whole thing was Al's perverted idea. What is it about men? They have perfectly good wives at home, and yet they have to look at women like these. Well, I guess every now and then a guy who drives a Dodge likes to close his eyes and imagine it's a Ferrari. <laughs> would that make to you you don't know how to drive well from this moment on you are no longer allowed to play with steve <laughs> and i never want to see another one of these again well uh, uh, let me take that off your hands of course. <laughs> women when we do it nah <laughs> but dan what a, uh, look at this real quick is this a, a breast or a nose or what you really don't know do you <laughs> well no, no. <laughs> peg asks if al ever thought about other women when they did it and, it, and i'm sitting there like peg you wore a blonde wig what do you think <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, what do you think the answer to that question is? Yeah, he walked in the house with a blonde wig, said, wear this, and brought you upstairs. What do you think? <laughs> Peg uh, does this two-bro chant, r rubs it on her chest, and says, chuda, chuda, tumbra, umbra. And Al just goes into, like, a spiral of, like, oh, my God, somebody help me. <laughs> and he's only glad that his father... Didn't live to see his shame. Oh, man. The toilet flushes. Yep. Yeah, Al's father walks out of the garage where the bathroom is, where that new bathroom that Al installed is, and basically it is Ed O'Neill in old man makeup. He has gray, kind of bushy hair, big bushy gray eyebrows, mustache. Um, and it's funny because I... I was thinking I was comparing that look to Ed O'Neill's real life look today because I guess he's portraying how old he is today roughly right yep now what what did you think about this whole scene though I thought it's brilliant it's perfect it's epic the filming method the split screen yeah excellent excellent timing on Ed O'Neill's part to time out both characters like because obviously he's sitting on a couch alone for each shot on each on either side of the couch 
and he's saying his lines, imagining his lines back to himself, reacting facially, then responding, then reacting, then responding, like, and he does that for a good chunk of it. There are parts where it cuts to just one side or the other, but mm-hmm. you do see the the brilliance in Ed's timing here. Dead? I thought you were dead. I thought you were alive. <laughs> Hey, Dad. Last time I saw you was at your funeral. You look great. They make you jug. <laughs> so how's tricks? Great. And how are the kids? Great. And how are my playboys? <laughs> you know, don't you? No, I care how you and the kids are. <laughs> how could you let that woman sell our playboys? I couldn't stop her. You know, everybody up there is laughing at you. What do you mean everybody's laughing at me? Is Abe Lincoln laughing at me? Abe? Socrates? <laughs> Mo? Larry? Curly? <laughs> the three Stooges are laughing at me? What about Marilyn Monroe? Is, is Marilyn laughing at me? She doesn't even know you're alive. <laughs> Look, Dad, you're surrounded by great minds up there. Doesn't anybody know anything about women? Not a one. (laughs) Well, Plato used to have a few theories, but now he mostly just uh, takes young boys camping. (laughs) Nobody really understands anything about women, and nobody ever will. But the one thing we know, they're the single greatest problem facing the world today. (laughs) They must be stopped. You must make a stand. We're counting on you, son. Everybody in heaven is counting on me? Yeah. See, we hid from the women and had a meeting. (laughs) We decided that you have to get her to get your playboys back. The dignity of all men is riding on you. Look at her, Dad. I can't even get her to give me a piece of cheese. (laughs) John Wayne thinks that you can do it. The Duke? The Duke wants me to do it? He's got a five spot riding on you. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to ask you guys, what do you think this is? Is this truly the ghost of Al's dad or is Al just hallucinating? What do you think is happening here? Hmm. I don't know. Jamie, what do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Th- I don't think it matters. I mean, yeah, it, that's that. Can, I think you show. could look at it either way you wanted, and it'd be fine. It'd work either way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the filming method, like I said, split screen. They filmed two sides and then met the film in the middle, and it's pretty spot on. The most, uh, if there's any flaw, the slightest misalignment when the on the couch cushion when the guys when uh, Ed sat down on both sides it it just moved it just ever so slightly and one of the flowers didn't line up i guess and one of the linings of the cushion didn't line up but other than that i mean for a tv sitcom is they did a spectacular job i would have never noticed that if you didn't say it <laughs> yeah no you're not supposed to um since this is my favorite episode well one of my top it's my top 10 or so and i've watched this about like 30 or 40 times so mm. i eventually uh, wondered how this is happening, and I would stare, you know. Yep. So <laughs> everyone's laughing at Alan Heaven, Abe Lincoln, Socrates, Mo, Larry, Curly, Marilyn Monroe is not laughing because she doesn't even know he's alive, <laughs> and that's probably one of the best lines ever. I remember my cousin <laughs> watched this with me, and that stuck out to him so much. He was it like, was she doesn't even know you're alive. <laughs> so for some reason, he loved that. <laughs> It is good, though, the way he said it, the way you yeah. just said it, too. It is good. And what a premise, like, thinking, is Marilyn Monroe laughing? Like, why would she care about anything Al Bundy's doing? Right. You know, if he was a real, just regular, low-life guy in Chicago. Yep. No one knows anything about women. Nobody ever will. Plato had a few theories, but now he just mostly takes young boys camping. Um, I'm surprised Al didn't go, hey, I just did that. Yeah, right? Right? He just took young boys camping like five episodes ago. 
<laughs> Al Daniel Bundy. Well, the dignity of all men is riding on Al. He has to get those playboys back. John Wayne has a five spot riding on him. Uh, Al and his dad share a thumbs up as his dad disappears. People clap in the audience. They realize they just saw a great moment. Are you guys glad they just had Al do it? Or do you think they should have had another actor portray his dad? Here's my thing with that is if you're never going to meet like so in terms of like sitcoms, right? The parents are always like a big, big part of it one way or another. Right. Uh, mo- most sitcoms, actually. And um, so to do that, it kind of boxes you in if you ever want to add that later on. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to you can't just have Al's Al's dad be Richard Really in the next, you know, in the <laughs> right. next season or whatever. So it, it so but it, if it's if you don't have to worry about stuff like that, yeah, it was perfect because, yeah, there, there's definitely something to that split screen and how I'm sure Married with Children is filmed. And I'm sure that was a little extensive. So, yeah, like it boxes you in. But if you don't need it, which obviously this show didn't, then who cares? Yeah, I think it's great. Why not? Why hire another actor if you don't have to? Right. <laughs> hey, woman. <laughs> Pilgrim. <laughs> listen up and listen good. Get up, get out, and get my Playboys. But Al... Now. <laughs> Well, how am I gonna get him? Don't care. <laughs> By the way, I loved Al's assertiveness. Like that, like that. He wasn't like. I he did wasn't, too. Wasn't it awesome? Like yeah, he, he got it done, man. Kind of like, hot. Yeah, like that guy. All he does is get get stepped on, basically, and and for him to fire back, and more importantly, like they responded to that. Well, Peg did. Well, Peg, that's what I'm saying, right? Peg, yeah, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> She says, I like how she says, well, how do you goes, don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care how you get it. And that's a good approach to life anyway. Figure it out. If there's something you really want to do or have to do and you have no clue and you say, how do I do it? I don't care. Just get it done. <laughs> and then you'll be amazed how you could find a way. Right. Um, so Al says to the kids, he wants his car washed pronto. And sh- that little filly is going to make him a man-sized dinner. They all laugh. <laughs> He's good. old and confused. <laughs> uh, so a man-sized dinner turns into a tang witch. Oh my god, that tang witch, dude! As if this episode's not legendary enough, you have a tang witch in it, um, <laughs> which one of us, probably me, is going to have to eat for our Patreon. Um, guys, like we said in the last show, we are going to start filling up that Patreon again with some exclusives. You know, as you know, the we have our, the network problems we're having and things like that. We just want to make sure things can be hosted forever before we put major efforts into them. But I think we're all pretty much willing to do reviews of movies still that uh, characters from this show were in. Uh, we're still willing to do that, and we're still definitely willing to do eating a tang witch and stuff like that, tang wipe, um, things like that will still happen on our Patreon. People are still willing to support the show just because of what a production it is week to week. It takes 10 hours a week to get one show done. So that's why people are supporting us on Patreon, and the exclusives now are just a bonus. Not something that's um, expected every two weeks like it was. And we thank you guys for that. You're awesome. So, now the kids didn't eat it because they only like it the way Mom makes it because she pinches the side so the orange sand doesn't run out, but... Can't anyone there just pinch the sides and go ahead and eat it? You would think. Right? Like, really? The best part is when Al's trying to get the tang out of the crease of his pants back into the sandwich. Yeah, at the end, yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I love the evolution. First it was just real tang, then tang wipe, now a tang witch. (laughs) When's mom coming home? When her task is done. Why? Well, because when we have a problem, we'd like to ask mom. What's the matter? You can't learn from me? Uh, Al bites into the sandwich while the sand runs out onto his shirt. <laughs> Unfortunately, you could tell that he only bit, like, the crust of the sandwich. I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Come on, commit. 
Oh. Well, like you could tell too that his like the his the way he was moving his hands, he was shaking the shaking it up, basically right. kind of shaking out the tang. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I like, I wanted him to like take a huge, but I would have, I yeah. do that. I, I'm curious. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe we have someone else to do the language. <laughs> hey, everybody check out my other podcast on cut to the chase. Jamie's going to be on it. It's called, uh, shaking out the tang. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's nothing that you can ask your mother. You can't ask me. Go ahead. Shoot. Okay. Well, I'm ovulating. <laughs> and when this happens, I get this pinching little cramp. What should I do? Walk it off. <laughs> and remember, the next time, stretch before you ovulate. <laughs> but uh, no problems here, Dad. <laughs> good. It's good. Now, I must parent some more. It's late. I want you both to go straight to bed. Okay, Daddy. So Al says it's getting late. He wants both kids to go straight to bed. So Bud grabs his coat and they head out the front door. <laughs> After these messages, we'll be right One magazine that brings it all together for you each month. Playboy reflects your appreciation of the total good life. It reflects your good taste in fashion, fun, fiction, and fact. You get first-rate reviews of books, movies, and television shows. Playboy puts you where the action is. In sports. In music and on the set. Playboy's advisor column lets you share the personal experiences and candid opinions of others, while Playboy's lifestyle pages are packed with insights and tips on how to get the most out of your life. Each month, the Playboy interview uncovers the real person behind the personality, and Playboy's victorious are often newsmakers in themselves. Every month, Playboy discovers and presents the world's most beautiful women. For the man who wants it all, Playboy brings it all together. Issue after issue after issue. As a subscriber, you're sure to enjoy Playboy each and every month. And right now, you can get 12 big, beautiful issues delivered to you at half the newsstand price. Subscribe to Playboy and start enjoying life to its fullest. To order your subscription, here's all you do. Just phone toll-free, 800-331-1000. Call now and get 12 issues of Playboy for only $15.50. You save $15.50 off the $31 newsstand price. My Playboys! My babies! How'd you get them back? Well, I owe it all to two, bro. You see, we were driving around in your car. When Wait a second, was... Peg. What were you doing in my car? Well, two bro thought it was best. <laughs> Anyhow, so we're driving around in your car, and I had no idea how to get the money to get your magazines back. So I started to rub two bro's belly, and suddenly it hit us. What, this, the solution of how to get all the Playboys back? No, or Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Peggy Mercedes hit my car? Yeah, but don't worry, I wasn't hurt. <laughs> anyway... Rather than going through our insurance companies, the guy in the car gave me enough money to buy your Playboys back. Aren't you proud of me? Well, wait a second, Peg. How much damage was done to my car? Oh, lots. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you can still drive it. I just think you better leave a little early for work tomorrow because your car doesn't turn left anymore. <laughs> and I don't think you'd want to anyway because, you know, there's no door on the side. Yeah, but you're okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> ah, who cares if you're okay and I can only drive clockwise? I don't care because I got my babies back. Yeah. Look, Peg, Brandy Brand, isn't she great? I don't see what's so hot about her. Well, you will when she's tacked up on the headboard. <laughs> Now. 
So Peg gets one sex point as they head upstairs nice. to do basically what Steve just did. Al is so excited, too. I mean, so is Peggy, but I, I don't think I've ever seen Al that excited. So did you guys think she'd get the Playboys back? Oh, yeah. Oh, she didn't have a choice. And what did you think of how she got them back? Was that good enough for you, uh, given everything else and knowing the time limit? I think it fits with exactly what you would expect to go down on this show. <laughs> yeah. Nothing they, good is ever just going to happen. I mean, right. You know. Yeah, they do come up with some crazy ways to get money sometimes, and that, that totally fits in line with that, yeah. All right, guys, so I had to save this for the end. Um, I didn't want to, like, mess with it. It's not majorly crazy, but I, just, I didn't want it to go in your heads any time sooner. So so Brandy Brandt, as I was looking her up, I have information for you that you won't even believe. Uh-oh. <laughs> that sweet little 20-year-old girl in the shoe store, Brandy Brandt was alleged to have been involved with a cocaine trafficking syndicate. Oh, dude. Importing cocaine into Australia between July and December of 2007. On November 15th, 2013, <laughs> Brandy was extradited from Los Angeles, California to Sydney, Australia to face criminal charges wow. in a Sydney court for her alleged involvement. In April 2014, Brandt pled guilty to a charge of conspiring to import drugs. <laughs> On August 29, 2014, Brandt was sentenced up to six years in prison. She became eligible for parole in November of 2016. Wow. Wow. I wonder if she got out. I don't know. It, for some reason, it doesn't say. <laughs> so, she didn't, so she ain't out. She became eligible, she but might. they didn't give it to her. It's not that she's that incredibly jarring now, but she kind of looks like Janice Dickinson. I was just going to say that because I just looked her up. Yes, yes. And Alex, oddly enough, I was going to say, okay, I'm putting two and two together. I'm like, what's this? 89, right? Uh, Nikki Six. I'm like, <laughs> what are the chances of this chick doing uh, an insane amount of blow? <laughs> I was going to say that, but I didn't I didn't want to go too crazy with it, but uh, I guess I was right. Yeah, I'm looking at her now. Yeah, it's not jarring. It's not insane, but it's a 49-year-old woman. It's definitely Janice Dickens. Oh, check this out. There's a picture of her holding up a Playboy like in her recent years, and it's her with Donald Trump on the cover of a Playboy. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. You know, I... Um... I, I think I'm going to look a little better than that when I'm 49, though. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, but I, I haven't been pouring the Coke up my nose either. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> That's debatable. <laughs> wow. I feel bad. I really like her, man. That's what she got involved with. Like, I don't. I just don't get it. I don't think she was operating by anybody else's. She was probably just doing her own thing, you know? She's not exactly a uh, playboy. Oh, wow. She has a... A Facebook, hey, OC friends looking for, oh, my God, this can't be true. November 2nd at some point <laughs> on Facebook, she wrote, hey, OC friends looking for a roommate slash room to rent in OC or Riverside December 1st. Don't smoke. Have no pets. Please hit me up if you have any info. And thanks in advance, BB. So she's out. Well, I don't know what year this was. <laughs> wow, that's just weird. <laughs> this whole thing gets weirder and weirder. I think it's better we leave Brandy in the episode of <laughs> of Married with Children. Yeah, next time I don't want to know anything about these people. Right. I just want to remember that episode fondly. Her marriage fell apart with Nikki Six, and she'd fallen off the radar until she was arrested in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're done researching people for the rest of this. this. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, we're done. Let's uh, let's end this on a, a lighter note, if if we could. Jamie, you actually are into Playboy, you know. You mentioned, and I remember one time you told me you had them all. Let's let's do some Playboy talk uh, in a in a positive light here, um, and maybe even a little something about Hugh Hefner. What would you have for us uh, in that context? I have actually kept this was when I was watching this episode I was like oh because I have all 
all the Playboys I've ever owned, and we still we still have a subscription now. I got it for Brian. Do for you Valentine. really? Yeah, I get him one every year for Valentine's Day. Didn't they have a tranny on the last one? <laughs> what? Oh, uh, I swear. Like the- I thought they started uh, putting the girls in clothes and then they making the- did. Well, see, they did, and so oh, I, I wait a minute. I right. stopped. I stopped reading it then, or I stopped writing. <laughs> reading. I do actually read. I do actually read, but um, the articles. Uh, but I stopped getting it then because. <laughs> That was when Hefner's son was in was in charge, like when he got in charge, and he's like, "Oh, we're gonna, you know, denude the the girls or whatever." So they did that. So I stopped buying, and then I guess Steve, for whatever reason, he came to his senses, and they put the nudity back in. Now it only comes out every other month. Now it doesn't come out monthly like it did at one point, but. Um, you basically get two every other month, though. There are two centerfolds, so it's kind of like a double issue every oh. other month. But they did actually go back to uh, having nudity. So I started subscribing again because I'm like, you know, good for you. But I was I was not going to support them when they abandoned that because, like, what the heck? Go to hell. What is it? Yeah, right. That's like still buying Budweiser when they make it non-alcoholic. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah. well... Sorry, I'm going to move I'm on like, to something what are you, I'm like, what are you trying to do? Who are you trying to pander to? You know, what? I mean, Playboy is an empire. I am a huge fan of Hugh Hefner. I always have been a huge fan. I mean, he what, he did so much for civil rights and free speech. Uh, he was a champion. For the E-network? And hey, uh, He's a world-renowned scientist. <laughs> people like to call him a misogynist or I mean they just like to label him with all of these negative things those are people who've really never stopped us to look at, at what he's actually done and when he had his playboy show playboy after dark he had um he had african american performers on that show and they told him no that the the networks in the south wouldn't play the show if he had african americans on the show and he did it anyway he said i don't care so they cannot play my show. I don't care. This is what I'm doing. I'm not going to not allow them to play because they're African American. I'm doing it. So he had Aretha Franklin on his show. He I mean, this guy had like balls of steel and he did so much good stuff. I'm in love with him. I've always been in love with him. He's now he was not very good at being married. That part's true. <laughs> like, he was not good at it. But he also never professed to be good at it. He kept telling them he was not good at it. But he just, you know, it never worked out. Why would he get married anyway? Like, we all know what went on. The sex romps in that room and, like, three girls at once. And that was all true. Honestly, I think there was a part of him that, even though he knew he wasn't suited for it and even though he knew he couldn't do it well, I think there was a part of him that probably was always striving for a bit of normalcy. That really was hoping <laughs> with seven could... girlfriends. Well, you know, that's <laughs> later in life when it sort of became it, it sort of became like a cartoon, like him wearing oh, his but... his pajamas and everything. Cool. I mean, that just became his persona. But early on, I, I think he had a piece of him that wanted to try, but it just didn't work out. But you know, whatever. I mean, this this is a guy who built. I mean, seriously, I I cried a lot when this man died. The first time or the second time? Did that. <laughs> <laughs> the real time. Um, so many people have, oh, boys particularly, owe their some like really important childhood memories yep. to the Playboy, the, the everything that is Playboy. Is it, people think it's people think it doesn't mean anything, but well, it really does. I mean, every guy I know, particularly those my age or older. They have that moment in their life where they either first discovered Playboy or mm-hmm. they have moments where they were at a friend's house or they were at a dad's house. Or like when Brian, he, he and his friends were little, they found this like shack in the woods that had like a stash of Playboy. Oh, yeah, I did the oh, dude, woods that's thing. where mine was. Everybody's, yeah. yeah, Everybody yeah. has those stories. Right. And it's because, I mean, the day he died on the radio station that I listened to, people were calling in with their stories and they were talking about how um, when they were kids, like they came across a stash and then what they did is they then took that stash and they passed it on to somebody else. And right. then 
Yeah, the only problem is you couldn't get the pages open. Right? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was from the rain. Um, but or you know they would say how they would purposely leave a stash of Playboys for people, or they would find stashes of Playboys that were purposely left. I mean, it was a it was a thing. It was a real thing. And the the fact that people are afraid to talk about how important that was to them and the, and they're right. growing up, I just think that's incredibly sad. And I've never been one to shy away from nudity or or sex or anything like that. That's part of who we are. We are human beings, and it's perfectly normal. And yeah, I think it's perfectly normal to look at a beautiful woman and appreciate that, just like I think it's perfectly normal to look at attractive at an attractive man and appreciate that. I don't think there's anything shameful or anything wrong with it. So this particular episode was a big deal for me. I remember this episode from way back. And when I realized this was the episode we were watching, I was very excited about it. Jamie, I really wish you would just find your passion here. I mean, <laughs> tell us how you really feel. I'm sorry. I kind of knew that was going to happen. I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Listen, Jamie, you're a hundred percent right. And first of all, that's an American thing. That whole way everybody looks at sex and that's that like an American, like a cultural thing uh, over here, anyways. And Playboy definitely was the first thing to normalize it, you know. And here's here's what I'll say about Hugh Hefner: he seems like the nicest dude. Like he really does seem normal to me, you know. Like if anybody had the opportunities he had, they would take it as well, you of know. He would. Why he wouldn't see- you? That's a, he lived every man's right. dream. But he but here's the thing though: Playboy was never sleazy. And there's a big difference. And I, I'm glad that he kind of, uh, you know, uh, drew the line in the sand, so to speak, mm-hmm. because it, it definitely, I mean, you can get the smuttiest of smut out there, but Playboy always brought their game and that extra bit of class. And, and I think even to this day, I'm sure that's what people are attracted to, to a certain extent, you know. So I, I totally agree with with, yeah. with Hugh Hefner. He was well, the man. It was always a gentleman's guide, you know, and that's why he always did have articles about clothing, about, uh, you know, liquor, cigars, whatever, anything that quote unquote gentlemen would be interested in. It was and and those articles are solid. It's not, you know, it's not like they're just fluff pieces. They're actually interesting stuff. Many authors got their start in Playboy. Shel Silverstein started in Playboy, and and it goes on. The list goes on and on and on. There are amazing interviews with all kinds of people. John Lennon was interviewed in Playboy. Everybody who's anybody has really has been interviewed in Playboy. I, there's nothing wrong. Pee Wee Herman was interviewed after he was caught in the movie theater. Well, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> but it's there's a difference between Playboy and Hustler, right? And those are the differences and yeah and of course hustler is famous for like showing the pink and i'm not slamming hustler because honestly i was always a fan of larry flint as well for similar reasons i mean he's a he's like the sleazier cousin of Hugh hefner but you know i i champion him as well because i champion anyone who does basically who who also leads to championing free speech. I mean, that's a big deal for me. So, but there is a difference between something like Playboy and something like Hustler or, you know, any of the other jugs, you know, <laughs> Biggins. <laughs> and you know what I find interesting is that, you know, they went specifically Playboy here. You know, they could have done a generic anything just to get the point across, but they specifically right. landed Playboy. Right. Well, it's funny you say that because Bud Bundy actually proved that Al has a stash of penthouse in that basement as well. Uh, we learned that in the episode Father Load when they go searching for the money that they know Al has laying around the house. And um, Bud goes in the basement to search and he comes back up and Peg's like, so did you find it? He goes, uh, I'm going to go lay down for a little while. Then he goes up the stairs, and as he turns around, you can see a penthouse sticking out of the back oh, of his Oh, that's right. <laughs> <gasps> oh, my God, I remember that. I, but yeah. I penthouse, like-, like, slides in between Hustler and Playboy. They tried to be right. Playboy, they, they, and they do the whole soft focus thing with their pictures, but it's still a, it's still not quite there. 
Yep, so uh, we're going to ovulate and we'll be right back with the ratings for this week's episode. <laughs> no, ma'am, we'll be right back to wrap up this week's review. Be sure to join their Facebook group page for all the podcast news and updates. Be sure to subscribe to them on the Apple Podcast app and please leave a review telling them what you think of the show. To subscribe to their YouTube channel, just go to Channels and search up Married with Children Podcast. Now they're available on the TV Time app. Go to your app store and type in TV Time. Join their Patreon and support your favorite podcast with a small monthly donation. You can email them at marriedwchildrenpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for checking out this review. Now Dan, Jamie, and Alex are going to give their final thoughts on this week's episode. <clears throat> All right, guys. Wow, that was desperately seeking Miss October. Finally got to one of my favorites that I've been looking forward to since I started the show. Uh, so how many thumbtacks are bouncing off your forehead for this episode, Dan? <laughs> Well, Alex, uh, I would give this episode probably four and a half. Th- what, is a half th- thumbtack a thing? Yeah. Like, wouldn't that just be like the pin part? Well, of if it? you're only going four and a half, I hope it's the sharp part. It is. It is. <laughs> it bounces off your forehead. Right. Right on the forehead. <laughs> Punish him. Are you offended that I rated it so low? <laughs> wow. No, I do. I, I really like this episode. Um, yeah, I, I I gotta say though, I just I wanted a little more from that conversation with Al and his dad. So I guess I'm not deducting a point from that, but it could have been a little. Yeah. So yeah, four point five tax off Jamie's forehead. <laughs> Jamie's alone, right? <laughs> not all of us. How about you, Jamie? How many how, how many tax you get off my head? <laughs> well, I'm a bit, I'm having five uh, thumbtacks bounce, and I don't really think that should be a surprise to anyone. Consider my impassioned speech earlier, <laughs> and the fact that, that I said this this is a favorite episode of mine. This is one that I was excited to see to talk about. So, yeah, it's definitely definitely five. Yeah, uh, me too. Five out of five thumbtacks bouncing off someone's forehead. Um, it's, it's just gold to me. I mean, every little bit from the newspaper being hot off a bum's face to the shoe store to Brandy. I love the whole thing with Brandy herself. I love the, the, how excited Alan Steve are to go in the basement is we're going to see Brandy. We're going to see Brandy. We're going to like all that, the devastation, what Peg did, the, the exchange with Al and his dad on the couch. Um, that is just like one of those golden moments in television that's like you just know something is special about this episode. Like everything, even being about Playboy is special. Um, it's so 1989 and so great and that was at like the peak of these types of things. And the whole every, the thing with the kids, the ovulation and everything and Peg and demanding she goes out and I don't know. There's, there's just not too much about this that isn't great and it's just so special to me and i've always loved it so five out of five for this uh tune in next week as we review nine six seven shoe al borrows a big loan from steve's bank to launch his own shoe hotline 